Hello class, today we will be continuing with our lecture on the law on sales. Our source materials, once again, are the books that we have already been reading since the start. Anyway, nandiyan naman sa description ng video kung anong mga books na ginagamit natin. So, uh, we will be uh, discussing chapter 7 and today we will be talking about extinguishment of sale. So, there are several causes for extinguishment of a contract of sale. So, some of them are common causes. So, common causes which are also means of extinguishing all other contracts. So, we have already studied this. Yung uh, Palo Remicon, uh, take note of payment, loss, uh, remission, uh, merger, condonation, and also novation as modes of extinguishing contracts of sale. So, syempre, ang isang contract of sale is but one kind of contract. So, yung um, mga modes to extinguish obligations will also apply to the extinguishment of uh, contracts of sale. What else? Um, yung mga special or those causes which are recognized by the law on sales. So, your book uh, gave several examples, pero merong mga iba dyan na mali. So, take note of 1484. This is the right of uh, the seller to rescind a contract of sale of personal property by installment in case the buyer fails to pay two or more installments. In uh, 1534, take note of the right, uh, the special right to rescind of an unpaid seller provided that uh, he exercises his right of stoppage in transit to or he has uh, maintained or retained the goods or meron siyang possessory lien. So take note also of um, rescission of sale of real estate at the rate of a certain price per unit of measure or number. And the rescission here, uh, this is 1539. The rescission here is based on a lack of area or inferior value of the uh, real property. In 1542, uh, the, uh, the buyer is entitled to rescind in case of sale of real estate made in lump sum. Uh, due to the failure of the seller to deliver all that is included in the boundaries. So, 1556, rescission because of a partial eviction in the sale of goods. 1560, there is rescission available to the buyer if yung uh, real property is burdened with a non-apparent uh, ismet or servitude. In 1567, this is rescission due to breach of warranty against hidden defect and the warranties as to quality. And 1591, rescission due to fear of loss of immovable and uh, fear of loss of its price. So take note in 1591, the fear must be reasonable and well-rounded fear. So also, meron tayong mga extra special causes of extinguishment of sale which are given special discussion by the uh, civil code, particularly the title on sales. So they are, take note, conventional redemption and legal redemption. So anyway, let's proceed with section 1, yung conventional redemption. So conventional redemption uh, is defined in 1601 as um, a right which the vendor which which the vendor will reserve to himself to reacquire the property sold to the buyer uh, provided that he returns to the buyer the price of the sale expenses of the contract and any other legitimate uh, payments made therefore and the necessary and useful expenses made by the buyer on the thing sold also the seller must fulfill other stipulations which may have been agreed upon by both buyer and seller. So there is a seller here. The seller sells his property to the buyer but with a right to repurchase the property. Para ma-repurchase niya yung property, um, kailangan niyang ibalik yung price of sale, expenses of contract, other uh, legitimate payments, etc. for uh, necessary and useful expenses. And uh, syempre, the seller must fulfill all other stipulations and conditions under the contract. So, ang tawag dun sa right na ni-reserve ng vendor para or ng seller para ma-reacquire or buy back niya yung kanyang property is called conventional redemption. 
So take note class that in case of conventional redemption, um, it covers both real and personal property. So although obviously there are certain articles in this uh, chapter that are, that are applicable only to immovable properties. So um, take note of the nature of conventional redemption. This is purely contractual. So, this is a right created by agreement of the parties, not by law. Kung uh, walang agreement of parties, wala tayong conventional redemption. Purely contractual, based on agreement, not by law. So, there must be a contract between the parties so that the buyer or so that the seller may reserve his right to conventional redemption. What else? Number two, um, this is an accidental stipulation. So the nullity of this stipulation cannot affect the sale itself since, uh, take note, a sale may be entered without the right of repurchase. So um, accidental lang ito. So take note, accidental uh, stipulations are included in the contract if they have been agreed upon by the parties. Now, being accidental, if this is a void, take note that it will not affect your principal um, contract, which is the contract of sale. Anyway, yung mga principal contract ng sale, it can be entered into without uh, your right of conventional redemption. So, your nullity of the accessory or accidental stipulation will not affect the principal contract. Number three, it is a real right when it is registered in the registry of property. Now, if it is registered in the registry of property, there is notice to the entire world of the ex uh, existence of the right of the seller to repurchase his property. So, it will bind third persons. Kasi nga, um, this is a constructive notice to the entire world. What else? Uh, number five. This is also potestative because it will depend upon the will of the vendor. So the vendor here, um, para sa kanya, uh, whether or not he will buy back his property is totally dependent on him. So obviously, the buyer should sell back yung property. So when it comes to the selling of the property, syempre, um, Depend, selling back ng property, depende na yan sa seller kung gusto pa niyang bilhin yung kanyang um, uh, property ulit. So, it is potestative because it is dependent solely on the will of the seller whether or not he will repurchase his property. So, potestative. Um, take note, we have already studied that. What else? Also, it is a resolutory condition. So, when yung right uh, of redemption is exercised, the right of ownership acquired by the buyer will be extinguished. So take note, seller sells to buyer, buyer buys. So the property is delivered to the buyer, buyer will become the owner. But yung ownership ng buyer is subject to a resolutory condition. Na if the condition happens, yun ngang pag -re repurchase ng seller, yung um, kanyang ownership over the property will be extinguished. So, in, sabi nga dito, in a pacto de retro sale, title or ownership of the property is immediately vested in the vendi a retro. So, subject to a resolutory condition, and that res resolutory condition is repurchased by the vendor a retro within the stipulated period. And syempre, pagka nagkaroon ng repurchase by the vendor within the period stipulated, the rights acquired by the vendee is uh, extinguished. Kasi nga, sa mga resolutory um, obligations, uh, resolutory conditions ha have the effect of um, extinguishing uh, already existing obligations. What else? Uh, number 5, 6, it is not an obligation. Um, but a power or a privilege that the vendor has reserved for himself. So the vendor is not required to re repurchase his property. 
it is not an obligation. But this is merely a privilege that the vendor has reserved for himself doon sa contract that he entered into with the buyer. So if he wants to exercise it, again, depende sa kanya. Ayan ay privilege lang na binigay niya sa sarili, sarili niya because of a contract entered into by the buyer. Kaya nga sabi ko, it is potestative. What else? Um, yung reservation ng right happens at the moment of perfection of the contract. So, dapat at the time of the perfection of the contract of sale, doon nila pag-usapan yung um, right of repurchase ng uh, seller. So, if the repurchase is agreed upon afterwards, kung pagkatapos na ng contract of sale, subsequent to the contract of sale, nagkaroon ng uh, agreement of repurchase, this is not strictly pacto de retro. But this is a promise to uh, sell on the part of the buyer a uh, retro. So, iba ang mga rights na napoproduce niyan. So, ang magko-cover niyan is 14.79. So, also, take note that the right of repurchase is not a right granted by the seller, granted to the seller by the buyer in a subsequent instrument. So, dapat dun mismo sa right, um, it is a right that must be reserved. Hindi siya right granted, it is a right reserved by the seller in the same instrument as the contract of sale. So, this is one stipulation accidental stipulation in the contract of sale. So, tandaan nyo, yung right of repurchase, hindi yan binibigay na right. It is not a right granted uh, by the buyer na binibigay niya sa seller. But this is a right reserved by the seller dun sa mismong contract of sale. Number letter H. So, person entitled to exercise the right of redemption necessarily is the owner of the property sold and not a third party. So, obviously, the person who can buy yung property, uh, rebuy or repurchase the property is necessarily the owner of the property sold and not a third person. Pagkadating kasi sa mga um, contractual obligations natin like a debt or, or simple loan, mutuum yan, a third person may satisfy yung uh, debt ng debtor even against the uh, will of the debtor. But the right of repurchase, remember, may be exercised only by the seller um, or uh, any person to whom the right of redemption is transferred by the seller. So, kung seller lang ang makakapag-repurchase, sa madaling sabi, and yung uh, any person authorized by the seller to repurchase or kung kanino man binenta ng seller yung kanyang right of redemption so nabebenta ang right of redemption and uh, letter i so it will give rise to reciprocal obligations of returning the price of the sale so the uh, seller should return seller a retro should return the price of the sale and other expenses and on the part of the um buyer a retro of delivering the property uh, back to the seller a retro and executing a deed of sale therefore. So, yun ang uh, tatandaan natin sa uh, nature ng isang contract of sale with conventional redemption or nature of conventional redemption. In Article 1602, we talk about um, equitable mortgage bakit kaya natin pinag-uusapan yung equitable mortgage? Kasi itong mga um, uh, right, uh, conventional redemption right na ito, usually um, ina-abuse yan ng mga, um, ng mga mga tao, ganyan. So, uh, yung kanilang mga contracts na sa totoo lamang ay utang secured by a mortgage on the property ang ginagawa nila is pinapalabas nila na ito ay isang pacto de retro sale. Bakit? Kasi ano ba ang equitable mortgage? So, an equitable mortgage is a mortgage which lacks the proper formalities. So, kasi para sa mortgage, ang kailangan mo talaga is actually a real estate mortgage contract. But, um, itong uh, contract na pinasukan ng mga parties dito, 
is a contract which lacks the proper formalities, form or words other requisites prescribed by law para sa isang uh, mortgage. But obviously, uh, in the contract, it is shown that the parties intended to make the property only as a security for a debt. And uh, take note that this contains nothing impossible or contrary to law. So, valid contract naman siya. Except na yung form niya ay mali para sa isang mortgage. So, pero ang intention talaga ng parties dito is to um, subject yung property as security for a debt. Or in short, gagawing collateral yung property para dun sa pagbabayad ng utang. So, an equitable mortgage is actually a loan disguised as a contract of a sale. So, yun nga ang sinasabi ko dyan. Utang, tapos, um, utang lang talaga, tapos may sinanglang property. But the practice nowadays is to make it into, um, is to draft an instrument or to make it appear that the contract is a sale with a right to repurchase. Bakit kasi kailangan gawin yon? Kasi tandaan nyo sa sale with a right to repurchase. Um, yung property, magpupunta na kaagad sa buyer slash creditor. Yan. In case of, um, kung ito ay straight up loan with collateral, ang mangyayari, the property is isasang lalang doon sa um, creditor, tapos yung creditor, para makuha niya yung property na yan, di man niya makukuha directly eh. Para, para, yun nga, para mapakinabangan niya yung property na yan, he has to foreclose it and uh, ask that it be, it, it be sold at a public auction and uh, yung proceeds ng sale na yon mapupunta sa kanya para mabayaran yung utang niya. Although, syempre, it does not preclude yung um, creditor to bid on the property. Pwede naman siya mag-bid sa property. So, my point is, sa pacto de retro sale, mas madaling na ilipat ng creditor sa pangalan niya yung lupa. But subject, yun nga, to the right of the um, debtor to repurchase, repurchase the land. So, ang dali, di ba? Pero kasi sa equitable mortgage, yun na nga, ang haba ng proseso para makuha ng uh, seller ang lupa. So, kailangan pang ipap... And in some cases, hindi pa talaga niya makukuha dahil iba ang makakabid doon sa... makakabid doon sa lupa. So, ayun nga. And uh, remember class, bawal din kasi na sa isang uh, mortgage, uh, meron kayong stipulation calling for automatic um, appropriation by the debtor uh, by the creditor of the land so sa tagalog bawal maglagay ng stipulation sa sangla na automatic kapag hindi nakabayad yung debtor sa sa creditor na yung lupa bawal yon ang tawag dun sa mga provisions na yon stipulations na yon ay pactum commissorium these are um, prohibited by public policy. So anyway, pag-aaralan natin yan when we go to mortgage. So, uh, yun na nga. Kaya inimbento itong um, requisites to presume equitable mortgage. So, a contract which is factual retro or even an absolute sale, as you will know later in 1604, um, shall be presumed to be an equitable mortgage if any of the following uh, circumstances um appears doon sa uh, uh, situation. So anyway, um, a contract with a right to repurchase is presumed to be an equitable mortgage in the following circumstances. Uh, applies also to contracts purporting to be absolute sale in case of 1604. So if the price of the sale is usually, unusually inadequate, sobrang baba ng price ng sale. So sabi dito sa law, Para sa mga contracts na ito, um, take note ha, dun sa mga naka-enumerate sa 1602, there are six distinct and separate circumstances. The presence of any, so hindi kailangan na mag-concur sila sa isa't isa. Uh, one is sufficient to give rise to the presumption that a contract, regardless of the name, is an equitable mortgage. So, 
uh, in consonance with the rule that the law favors least transmission of uh, property rights. So, ito yung una, the price of the sale is unusually inadequate. So, sabi ng uh, law, pagka masyadong mababa yung price, uh, there is a presumption that this may be, the contract may be not pacto de retro, not absolute sale, but an equitable mortgage. Kasi syempre, pagka nagsangla ka, um, pagka nagbenta ka, kung totoong benta yan, gusto mo yung highest price possible. Pero yun na nga, pagka masyadong mababa ang price, baka mamaya hindi naman talaga binenta kung hindi uh, sinangla ng, ng, uh, buy, ng uh, debtor to the uh, creditor. Pero sabi nga, kahit na dito sa enumeration sa 1602, one is sufficient. Sabi din ng law, on the other hand, mag-ingat daw pagka ito ang consider mo. Because um, mere disproportion of the price to the value of the property in the absence of other circumstances incompatible with the contract of purchase and sale cannot alone justify the conclusion that the transaction is a pure and simple loan. So, hindi matik yan. So, inadequacy of the price um, is not sufficient para sabihin nating itong uh, pacto de retro sale na to or even an absolute sale is actually an equitable mortgage. So, para ma-set aside dyan as equitable, yung sale na yan, tapos masabi na equitable mortgage siya, dapat uh, the price of the sale is grossly inadequate or purely shocking to the conscience or it is uh, in such nature that the mind revolts doon sa uh, disparity noong uh, price. In short, OA talaga yung disparity ng price. Para talagang maikonsider mo at maiset aside mo, ay itong pacto de retro na to, parang di naman talaga pacto de retro yan. Baka mamaya ito ay equitable mortgage lamang. Tapos itong si creditor, kinakamkam na niya yung property by executing a pacto de retro sale contract. So, ingat, yun lang ang sabi ng law. So, if the price is unusually inadequate, it may be uh, presumed to be an equitable contract, may be presumed to be an equitable mortgage, pero ingat, sabi lang ng uh, law. Kasi, nga naman, sa pacto de retro sales, the price is usually lower to facilitate repurchase. Yan. So, Vendor expects to redeem, reacquire the property, so he will uh, sell it at a lesser price for uh, it for uh, for redemption to be easier. Now, uh, number two, if the vendor remains in the possession of the property, so tandaan nyo ah, binenta ng vendor a retro to the vendee, pero yung vendee, is na is not uh, placed in possession. So obviously kung talagang binenta to, if this is a true pacto de retro or a true uh, absolute sale, bakit hindi natin ipwesto yung buyer doon sa lupa? So where where the vendor elementary na daw yung doctrine na to, where the vendor remains in physical possession of the land as lessee or otherwise, the contract should be treated as an equitable mortgage because if you really bought the land bakit di ka popwesto kung ikaw yung buyer? So, yun ang uh, number three. Number C, letter C, the period of redemption is extended after expiration. So, uh, merong period provided pero laging in-extend itong uh, redemption period na to. Bakit? Kasi baka man naman talagang hindi naman talaga siya pacto de retro. But, uh, sangla lang talaga. Utang na uh, sinecure ng uh, mortgage on a uh, land. What else? Number four, the purchaser retains part of the purchase price. So here, class, um, the seller retains part of the purchase price. Probably an indication that this is an equitable mortgage instead of a pacto de retro sale. What else? Seller binds himself to pay taxes and uh, the alleged vendee never declared in his name for taxation purposes the land uh, sold. So, syempre, kung yung seller pa rin ang nagbabayad ng real property taxes, bakit siya pa rin kung talagang ibinenta niya? So probably, equitable mortgage lang yung contract entered into. Now, uh, dun sa part ng 
alleged Wendy never declared in his name for taxation purposes the land sold. So, um, malamang-lamang kung talagang bili niya yan, syempre gusto niyang ilipat sa pangalan niya, di ba? Pero syempre, ito na naman tayo. Meron na naman disclaimer ang law. Medyo ingat daw pagkayan lang daw ang circumstances na, yun lang daw ang uh, circumstances na kinoconsider mo. Um, kasi daw, it may only show um, na yung um, seller uh, or yung pala yung buyer, it will show neglect on the part of the uh, buyer in uh, registering yung land sa kanyang pangalan. Baka na nga naman kasi tinatamad lang yung buyer. Kaya hanggang ngayon, hindi pa niya nalipat sa, or naparehistro sa pangalan niya yung, um, uh, yung sale. So, yan ang uh, tandaan ninyo. So, dapat pagka ito, medyo ingat. What else? Um, number 6. Ba't kasi gumagamit ako ng letter tapos mamaya gagamitin ko number din ano. So, hirap na hirap din ako sa ginagawa ko sa sarili ko. So, anyway, in uh, parties really intended an equitable mortgage, nakasulat yung contract as facto de retro sale but um, the intention of the parties is decisive. So, yung, um, yung intention nila is... Uh, shown by surrounding circumstances such as conduct, words, actions, and deeds prior to, during, and immediately after executing the agreement. So, kahit ano pang tinawag dyan, kahit na pacto, diretro pa, kahit absolute sale pa, pero kung ang lumalabas na intention nila is to simply secure a loan um, by a mortgage on a parcel of land or ano pang property yan, remember class that uh, the contract will be presumed to be an equitable mortgage. So, yun ang 16.02. So, what else? Um, Pacto de retro sales are not favored sales. Siyempre, sa sales with a right to repurchase, um, ma para kasing ano eh, para kasing nas na suspend yung um, um, productivity ng uh, lupa. Kung halimbawa lupa. Kasi syempre, ikaw na buyer, dahil alam mong may right to repurchase, hindi mo masyadong i-improve yan. And you will try to get as much um, income from the property as you can. Pero kung, um, kasi parang ano to eh, suspended ownership. So, usually, yung pacto de retro is uh, detrimental to the improvement of the property. Ikaw naman na uh, seller, yun na nga. Siyempre, dahil alam mo naman na nasa buyer na yung property at uh, tinransfer mo yung ownership, baka hindi ka na rin naman interesadong i-improve siya. So, suspended ownership. Ano ba, buyer? Hindi mo naman alam kung talagang mapapasa yung lupa. Uh, maghintay ka pa ng time na mag-expire yung right of redemption. So, uh, generally, class back to the retro sales are not favored. So, ang magiging interpretation ng uh, court dyan is lagi silang equitable mortgage. Unless that uh, if they see that uh, if it is uh, enforced according to its term terms, it is not unconscionable, oppressive, or unjust. Uh, natin. What else? Um, yun pa, dagdag natin. Presumption that... Uh, uh, that a contract is an equitable mortgage is not conclusive. It may be overcome by competent and satisfactory proof to the contrary. Take note also of uh, presumptions in case of doubt. So, in case of doubt daw, uh, yung doubt will be resolved in favor of an equitable mortgage. So, it shall be presumed to be an equitable equitable mortgage even if only one of the circumstances mentioned in 16... 02 is uh, present. Kasi nga, sa mga pacto de retro sales, dahil nga uh, onerous ang kanyang effect, and uh, it will uh, put yung property in suspended um, ownership. Hindi talaga masyadong type ng law ito. So, in case of doubt, a, court, a contract purporting to be a sale with a right to repurchase will be, this, uh, will be regarded as an equitable mortgage. So, obviously, this is an this presumption is an exception to the general rule. Um, 
take note of uh, the rules in interpretation of contracts in 1378. Diba? Sabi ko sa inyo noon, nung diniscuss ko yung interpretation, ay uh, pagka hindi nyo kayang i-interpret yung contract in accordance with all of the provisions found in uh, chapter 5 of uh, the law on contracts, you can interpret yung contracts according to two doctrines in 1378. Yung doctrine of uh, least transmission of rights and interest and also yung uh, doctrine of greatest reciprocity of interest. Sabi ko nun, kasi hindi nyo na natatandaan, I'm sure. Hindi nyo nga pinanood eh, I'm sure yan. Um, pagka ang contract is onerous, you will apply yung uh, interpretation which will yield the greatest reciprocity of interest between the parties. So ang example ko pa nga dun is, Pagka may contract of uh, loan, tapos mayroong interest. Tapos um, yung period hindi malinaw kung 6 months or 12 months. Siyempre, ang contract of loan with interest is an onerous uh, contract. So, anong interpretation mo dyan? Ang interpretation mo is the interpretation which will uh, yield the greatest reciprocity of interest. San ba makikinabang ang both parties? So, mas makikinabang ang interpretation na sa interpretation na 12 months. Why? On the part of the creditor, he will get more interest kasi mas mahaba yung time. On the part of the debtor, uh, he will be given more time to pay. So, mas magbe-benefit silang dalawa pagka ganun ang interpretation. So, yung greatest reciprocity of interest doctrine applies to... Um, onerous contracts. Now, in case of gratuitous contracts, we will apply yung um, least transmission of rights and interest doctrine. So, sa least transmission of rights, kung yung interpretation kung saan mas konti ang rights na ibibigay, yun ang magiging interpretation natin. Nagahanap ka ng ballpen, may nag-abot sa'yo ng ballpen, ano ba to? Binigay, lang ba sa, binigay na ba sa akin or pinahiram lang? So, this is a gratuitous contract. Inabot lang sa'yo, wala ka naman binayaran eh. So, ang magiging interpretation mo dyan is, ano bang interpretation, mas konting rights ang mabibigay? So, syempre, kung i-interpret natin na ibinigay, edi eh wala ng ownership yung nag-abot. -nag Pero kung ang interpretation natin is pinahiram, yung nag-abot ng ballpen will retain ownership. So, what interpretation will transmit lesser rights? Pinahiram lamang ang ballpen. So, anyway... That is the general rule in 1378. But 1603 is an exception to the general rule. So remember here that um, yung pacto de retro sale, sale yan eh. So this is an um, onerous contract. So nagbentahan eh, or yung utang, sabi mo na, basta ganun, may, may, merong, merong burden. But uh, take note here, Diba pagka onerous contracts, we should interpret using greatest reciprocity of interest rule. Pero dito, hindi. We will interpret it using yung least transmission of rights and interest. So, pagka, pagka merong ganyan na mga usapan, yung lupa, binenta, or sinangla, etc. Uh, remember, an equitable mortgage will be the interpretation. Bakit? Because ito, sabi dito. An equitable mortgage, really niya ako sana eh, ito na. An equitable mortgage, sabi niya, affects a lesser transmission of rights and interest than a contract of sale. Kasi sa contract of sale, kahit mapakto de retro yan, my point is, napunta na sa buyer yung property. But in an equitable mortgage, the property continues to be owned by the um, seller debtor. So, yun ang um, magiging interpretation natin yan. So, since the debtor does not surrender all the rights to his property but simply confers upon the creditor the right to collect what is owing from the value of the property given as security. So, ang interpretation natin para sa mga um, Contracts uh, purporting to be uh, sale of uh, real property with a right to repurchase, ang maging interpretation natin ay equitable mortgage lamang. Um, if yung mga, uh, si uh, mga circumstances in 1602 are present, uh, kahit any one of them. 
So, yun ang tandaan natin when it comes to 1603. So, Article 1605 provides for uh, the remedy of reformation. So, take note that we have already studied reformation when we studied Chapter 4 of the law on contracts. So, ano ang sabi ko sa reformation noon? Na syempre, hindi nyo na naman natatandaan. Reformation is a remedy granted by law uh, by means of which a written instrument is made or construed so as to express or to conform to the real intention of the parties when the intention is not expressed in the written instrument. So, take note, it is reformation of instrument, not reformation of contract. Ang binabago nyo lang dito is yung instrument na mali ang pagkakadra. So, ang pinag-usapan nyo ay ganito, yung lumabas sa instrument ay ganito. So, iba doon sa napag-usapan ninyo. So, ang nagkamali dito is yung instrument. So, the reason why there is a mistake is probably um, because of mistake, uh, fraud, inequitable conduct, etc., etc., Pero meron na talagang pinag-usapan yung mga parties. Ito yung pinag-usapan nila. Ito na talaga. Pero nung sinulat yung instrument, iba yung uh, lumabas doon sa instrument. So, syempre, anong gagawin mo? You will reform yung instrument. Not the contract, but only reform yung uh, instrument. So, uh, take note that we have already studied this in 1359. So, para sa... Uh, reformation, uh, this is a remedy granted para sa uh, in uh, 1605. So, uh, ayun na nga, sabi ko sa inyo, uh, there's already an agreement, ito na nga to, there's a meeting of the minds, but the instrument does not pro, uh, embody the true agreement of the parties. Now, take note also, if there is no meeting of the minds, there is actually no agreement between the parties, the remedy is not reformation, but annulment of the a contract. So, yun ang tandaan natin. So, in 1605, um, the apparent vendor may ask for um, yung reformation of the instrument. Bakit? Because the parties uh, really intended a mortgage but the instrument states that the property is um, sold absolutely or with a right to repurchase. So, uh, dito, ang pinag-usapan ay sangla lang talaga. May agreement yung parties. Ito na yung agreement nila o ito na. Except yung written instrument is um, a pacto de retro sale or a sale, uh, absolute sale. So, mali yung instrument. Pero okay sila sa usapan nila. So, ngayon, para ma-correct yung instrument, it must be uh, reformed. So, reformed or corrected so that the contract should appear to be a mortgage and not an absolute sale or a pacto de retro sale. So anyway, ayun uh, ang 1605. 16, um, ayan, apparent vendor may ask for reformation of the instrument. What else in 1606? Period for the exercise of the right of redemption. So if there is, um, so here class, take note that, um, Sa paragraph 1, uh, sabi dito, in the absence of an express agreement. So, Article 1606, sabi, the right referred to in 1601, in the absence of an express agreement, shall last four years from the date of the contract. So, what the law refers here to, doon sa provision na yan, yung sa term na express agreement, it refers to the time. So, hindi... Kumbaga, meron na talagang napag-usapan na uh, right of redemption. Pero uh, there is an there is absence of an express agreement as to the time when the redemption will be made. So, I just want to clarify that one. So, anyway, the period for uh, the exercise of the right of redemption uh, in 1606, number one, if there is no agreement granting the rights, so walang napag-usapan na mayroong right of redemption, obviously, walang right of redemption. Kasi nga, di ba, conventional redemption to. This is not a right um, given by the law to the seller, a retro. But this is a, a privilege that is uh, reserved by the 
seller doon sa contract of a sale. So, if the privilege is not reserved by the seller, and siyempre, walang period for redemption. Dahil wala rin naman talagang right of redemption. What else? Um, if the agreement merely grants a right, so, sabi lang doon sa agreement, oh, meron kang right to repurchase. So, there is a total absence of express stipulation as to time yung sinasabi ko kanina. So, hindi na pag-usapan kung kailan i-exercise pero sinabing mayroong right of repurchase. So, take note here that the repurchase should be made uh, four years from the date of contract. So, period of redemption shall be four years from the date of contract. What else? Um, if a definite period of redemption is agreed upon, um, then the right to redeem must be exercised within the period fixed in the agreement provided it does not exceed 10 years. So if the parties agree 7 years, if the parties agree 8 years, edi kailan? 7, year, eight, seven years, 8 years, but in no case to exceed uh, 10 years. So what about if the period exceeds 10 years? So take note that if the agreed period exceeds 10 years, the vendor a retro has 10 years from the execution of the contract to exercise the right of redemption. In short, yung sobra, hindi kinakaw, hindi nakasama. So, what else? Um, in short, you cannot redeem uh, dun sa excess, dun sa 10 years. What about if a period of redemption is not specified? So, here the parties agree that the vendor shall have a right to redemption and they uh, intended a period. So, Yung una, yung number two, oh, may right to redeem ka. Pero wala talagang usapan tungkol sa uh, period. So, there is a total absence talaga. Wala talagang stipulation as to time. Pero naman dito sa number five, there is um, again an agreement that there is a right to redeem. They intend a period. So, uh, may right to redeem ka. Tapos, uh, pag-usapan natin yung... Uh, Period. May period yan. Ganyan. May period yan. But remember here that the period is not uh, specified. So, the period, if not specified, is but agreed upon is 10 years. So, in order to be applicable, remember, paragraph 2 of 1606 requires the existence of an agreement, not a definite and clear agreement of the period. The mere fact that the agreement is obtained by inference does not argue in favor of its non-existence. What else? Um, number 6, final judgment that contract is pacto de retro. So, here, um, there is... Um, Kumbaga, there is a question whether or not the contract is an equitable mortgage or a pacto de retro contract. So, malamang-lamang, ano yan, ang contract lumabas ay pacto de retro. But uh, the parties concede, one of them, either uh, malamang-lamang it will be the seller who will state, ay, hindi pacto de retro yan, equitable mortgage yan. So, nagdemanda ang seller, etc., etc., Tapos later on, it is found out by it is found by the court that the transaction is actually not a mortgage but a pacto de retro. Tama pala si buyer all along. So remember, the period for redemption uh, is from the time the final judgment was rendered in a civil action on the basis that the contract was a true sale with a right to repurchase. So. Sabi ni buyer, pacto de retro to. Sabi ni seller, hindi, equitable mortgage yan. Demanda, demanda, demanda. Tapos sabi ng court, ay, pacto de retro talaga yan. Remember class that the vendor, a retro, has 30 days within which to exercise his right of repurchase. So, so, uy, namawala na. So, remember here for uh, number uh, 6, yung 30-day period must of course be counted from the time of finality of uh, judgment. So, it is not sufficient also that the seller merely manifests an intention or desire to repurchase. Uh, remember class na kailangan na actual and simultaneous tender of uh, payment. 
tsaka talagang kailangang i-exercise ng seller yung kanyang right to repurchase within the 30-day period. Now, question, can you extend the period to redeem yung, um, uh, yung parcel of land? Uh, sabi ng law, pwede. As long as the period, total period should not exceed 10 years from the time of making of the contract. So, there is nothing in the law to prohibit daw. So, if 4 years, uh, yun ang period of redemption yun. Later on, sabi, ah, dagdagan pa ng another 2 years, okay lang. Dagdagan lang dagdag hanggat uh, basta lang wag uh, lumagpas doon sa 10 years. Um, what else? Uh, next question, what is the effect of excess uh, period? So, remember, effect of excess period excess doon sa 10 years. So, period in excess of 10 years is void. But nullity of the stipulation to repurchase on account of the period fixed um, exceeding that permitted by law. Pero sabi ng batas, um, kahit na void yung uh, stipulation to repurchase, dahil nga naman sobra-sobra uh, yung period, certainly it will not affect or vitiate the validity of the sale. In short, the sale is still valid. Bakit? Yung stipulation is merely accidental to the uh, sale. So anyway, what if um, the right is uh, suspended? Let us say, class, uh, these are some cases. Yung to, um, parang to discuss kung paano i-interpret yung period. Uh, what if, um, like in the case of Rosales versus Reyes, 25 field, 496, yung uh, nakalagay na stipulation is that the right cannot be exercised within 8 years. So, um, obviously, the right of redemption, yun ang nakalagay sa contract nila eh, the right of redemption sa case na yun, the right of redemption can be exercised only within the next uh, 2 years, after the 8th year, but before the 10th year. So, yun ang uh, ibig sabihin doon. So, um, Right cannot be exercised within 8 years kasi nga naman sabi maximum 10 years meron na lamang may prohibition dun sa first 8 years para mag-redeem. Uh, pwede naman daw yun as long as hindi nyo na-extend yung period ng uh, repurchase to more than 10 years. Uh, but uh, what if the agreement is um, repurchase at any time I have the money sabi doon uh, doon sa agreement. So this happened in the case of Soriano versus Avalos 47 OG 168. So remember here the agreement uh, as to the there is agreement as to the time but the time is indefinite. So the right should be exercised within uh, 10 years. So um Paano naman kung ang nakalagay is exercise the right of redemption when the buyer has the means, when he has the means, same as in number uh, 2, yung sinabi kong pangalawang example, at any time they have money, when he has the means, ganyan, halos pareho lang naman ang uh, tunugan doon. So yung when he has the means happened in the case of Halo Alohado versus Lim Siyong Ko, 51, Phil 339, the agreement is again, um, there is an agreement as to time, but the time is indefinite. So take note that uh, the right may be exercised within 10 years. What about if the contract provides redemption may be made in March of any year? So this happened in the case of Badong versus Austria, 31 field 479. So there is an agreement, again, as to time, pero again, it is indefinite. So um, pagka indefinite ang period, di ba nga sabi ko, 10 years. So, paano naman kung ang stipulation redeem not before 5 years nor after 8 years? Pwede ba raw yan? Pwede raw yan, sabi ng uh, jurisprudence. So, suspend, pwedeng isuspend naman kasi yung right um, right of uh, redemption. Pero syempre, hindi dapat uh, lalagpas dun sa 10-year period. So, in our example, not before 5 years nor after 10 years, uh, meron yung 5th year, 6th year, 7th year, 8th uh, year para not, not before 5 years nor after 8 years pala to uh, redeem. Meron siyang 5th, um, 6th, 7th, and 8th to redeem. So, if what if the stipulation is the right cannot be exercised till after 10 years? So, syempre, bawal ito. So, this stipulation cannot be given effect. This happened in the case of Santos versus Heirs of Chrysostomo, 41 field 342. So, this in this case, the Right 
uh, may be exercised within yung uh, 10 years. So, yun ang mga ibang uh, example. So, pwede na siguro yan. Bala na kayo dun sa iba. So, the reason for uh, limiting yung right of um, redemption is because the law does not favor suspended uh, ownership. Yan. So, ayan. Period, if given beyond 10 years, the right to redeem still exists during the first 10 years. Yan. Ito yung ka last na example na sinabi ko. If the period given is beyond 10 years, the right to redeem still exists during the first 10 years. It would be an error to hold that the sale is an absolute one. Still, sale with the right to repurchase but uh, the period is considered as modified. Article 1607 talks about the necessity of judicial order for recording of the consolidation of ownership of the buyer. Now, uh, take note that if the seller does not redeem the property within the period agreed upon or the period given by law, Remember that the buyer's title to the property will become irrevocable. So, absolute na yung kanyang title. In short, yung buyer sa kanya na yon. Yung ownership is consolidated uh, on his uh, person. He will become the absolute owner of the property. Or yung, um, in this case, uh, we are talking about um, real property. And uh, also, yung kanyang ownership is uh, perfected na. Yung perfected, ang ibig ko lang sabihin dyan is um, wala nang right to uh, repurchase. Now, um, take note here na kahit na consolidated na yung ownership or absolute na yung ownership ng buyer doon sa uh, real property, kailangan pa rin magkaroon ng hearing para yung kanyang absolute ownership or consolidated ownership doon sa property ay ma-register doon sa titulo. Kasi um, tandaan nyo dyan na mag-e-execute pa ang um, buyer ng affidavit of consolidation of ownership. Kung saan sasabihin niya na na uh, akin na talaga ito, wala nang right to repurchase, hindi kasi na-repurchase within the period given by uh, law or agreed upon by the parties. So, absolute na yung ownership ng um, uh, buyer. Tapos, i-annotate yan sa, ilalagay yan dun sa title niya, sa pangalan niya. So, ngayon, para mailagay yung affidavit of consolidation of ownership na yan, or uh, anyway, yun, para makonsolidate yung ownership, there must be a hearing. But um, para lang naman to determine um, yung uh, ano ba yun? um, the genuineness of uh, yung uh, transaction. Kasi baka mamaya, yun na nga, ito ay equitable mortgage lamang at hindi naman pacto de retro. But anyway, please take note that the buyer is the absolute uh, owner of the property. Yung hearing contemplated by 1607 refers uh, not to the consolidation kasi nga consolidated na talaga yung ownership but merely for the purpose of registering para lang sa marehistro yung uh, consolidation of uh, the ownership of the buyer over the property. What else? Um, in 1608, the nature of the right to redeem uh, is a real uh, is of a real character and this is not a personal uh, right so uh, obviously this is subject to the provisions of the mortgage law and land registration law with respect to third persons anong ibig sabihin lang yan vendor a retro cannot exercise the right of redemption if the property is transferred to a third person by the buyer so, kung gusto mo talaga, kung seller ka, gusto mong ma-exercise yung right of redemption mo. Uh, diba, tandaan nyo, ako, binenta ko yung seller ako, binenta ko yung property ko kay buyer, na kay buyer na yung property. Ipapangalan pa niya sa sarili niya yan. So, take note, kung ako, matalino talaga akong seller at gusto kong ma-exercise yung aking right of redemption, 
ang gagawin ko is to annotate or ipapalista ko doon sa um, titulo ni buyer yung aking right of redemption as found in the deed of sale as agreed upon by the... Nireserve ko yung right na yun eh. So, kailangan ilagay ko rin sa title yon Para pagka halimbawa itong si buyer, ibenta niya. Pwede niyang ibenta eh, nasa pangalan niya eh. So, ngayon, binenta ni buyer kay third person. The third person has to recognize my right of redemption because it is annotated in the title. So, ano na yan eh? Pagka annotated sa title, it is constructive notice to the entire world. So, third persons have to recognize my right. Now, what if ako isang hindi masigasig na seller at hindi ko inannotate ang aking right of redemption? Buyer says a third person. Third person is in good faith and pays the property for value. So, may binayad talaga siya for value and in good faith. Remember class na ako na seller na hindi masigasig cannot exercise my right of redemption against the innocent third person. So, yun ang uh, tandaan nyo. This is a uh, Uh, right of real character and uh, hindi siya personal right pero syempre um, kailangan mo pa rin sundin yung mga provisions ng mortgage law and also land registration law uh, in 1609 subrogation of buyer in the seller's rights and action so in case of a sale with a right to repurchase uh, nata-transfer sa buyer lahat ng elements ng ownership in fact the buyer becomes the owner of the property subject to the subject to a resolutory condition now um pagka nagkaroon na ng uh, failure to repurchase uh, yung property yung ownership nga ng uh, buyer will be consolidated but uh, again yung consolidation ng ownership niya cannot be registered without a judicial hearing but um um what else uh, obviously yung uh, seller will transfer upon the sale the seller will transfer all of his rights to the uh, seller so yun ang tandaan natin so if the seller has no right to transfer malamang lamang yung kanyang buyer has no right to receive as well so anyway examples of the rights to be transferred by the uh, uh, seller in case um, ay parang di ko yata sinulat Oh, nga, hindi ko sinulat. Examples of rights of the uh, seller which will be transferred to the buyer. Right to mortgage the property. Uh, what else? Right to continue prescription and also the right to receive fruits will now belong to the uh, buyer. So, hmm. what else? Uh, 1610. In 1610, seller, seller's creditor can use the seller's right of redemption. So, yung right of redemption is actually a sellable uh, property, meaning it can be uh, sold. Siyempre, di ba, sa pacto de retro sale, usually mababa ang price. So, para mabawi, kung hindi na interesado yung seller na i-repurchase yung land, yung kanyang right to repurchase, uh, pwede niyang ibenta to recover some of the amount that he lost in the uh, pacto de retro sale na usually ay mababa ang presyo. Now, uh, take note, class, here that the creditor of the seller can use the seller's right of redemption. So, the right to redeem is a property. And remember that it is answerable for the debts of the seller provided, syempre, that the vendor's properties are first exhausted. So, yung um, exhaustion ng rights na to, ay tinatawag na benefit of excursion. So, seller. May binenta ako seller. May binenta akong property kay buyer. Tapos, meron akong right of, nireserve ko yung aking right of redemption. Marami akong utang. Yan. Tapos, um, wala akong um, pambayad. So, yung mga creditors ko, syempre, pwede nilang makuha yung right of redemption na ni-reserve ko dun sa property na ibinenta ko dun sa um, buyer. Yan. Bakit naman magkaka-interest ang mga creditors ko dun? 
Kasi tandaan nyo, na binenta ko ng mababa yan kasi pakto directory yan eh. So, mababa ko lang binenta yan. So, ngayon, kung ire-redeem nila yan, mare-redeem din nila ng mababa yung mga creditors ko. So, anyway, interesado sila dyan, I'm sure. But, uh, yun na nga, bago nila makuha yung aking right of redemption, uh, all of um, my uh, properties should be first exhausted. So, tignan muna nila kung meron pa silang makukuhang iba. Pagka exhausted na, wala na, dun pa lang nasagot yung benefit of excursion. So, yung benefit of excursion uh, belongs to the buyer. So, ibig sabihin yan, dapat um, um, may turo muna lahat ng properties ng seller that are available for uh, paying yung creditors. Now, kung wala na yung uh, kahit na anong properties that may be used to pay for the debt of the seller, dun pa lamang pwedeng kunin ng mga uh, creditor yung right of redemption ng uh, seller. So, dapat the exhaustion must be established to the satisfaction of the vendee. Kumbaga, parang alam na rin ng vendee na, o nga, wala na rin talagang ibang makukuha ang mga creditors. So, ito ng right na to ang pwede, ni, pwede na, wala nang choice kung di ibigay sa kanila yung right na to. So, anyway, 1610 will uh, refer to all kinds of creditors, ordinary or preferred, except those uh, mortgage creditors or yung mga creditors in a contract of anti-crisis. So, anyway, pagka mortgage creditors kasi hindi mo na kailangang i-exhaust yung properties ng uh, debtor seller but uh, all you have to do is to foreclose the uh, rights uh, yung uh, mortgage so kung halimbawa seller ako meron na kung binentang uh, property kay buyer with pacto de retro right tapos yung property na binenta ko sa buyer is actually nakasangla doon sa isang uh, creditor so the creditor Ma, ang dapat lang niyang gawin is to foreclose yung uh, property which is now in the hands of the buyer as long as yung uh, right ng mortgagor is annotated in the title. So, pagka nakita ng buyer yan, ay, meron pa lang sangla ito. So, yung buyer buys it with the sangla kasi lumilipat yung ano eh, sangla doon sa, nakadikit sa property yung sangla eh, lumilipat yan. So, If the buyer purchases it with uh, the right of mortgage, merong danger na marimata yung lupa habang nasa kanya. So, walang benefit of excursion available to the buyer in this case if the creditor is a mortgage creditor. What else? Um, ito na yung mga uh, redemption by um, mga co-owners, heirs, yan. So, these are the rules in 1611. Seller may be required to redeem the whole property although he had sold only part thereof. So, remember class in 1611, the buyer acquires the whole of an undivided immovable, a part of which is subject to a right to repurchase. So, yung um, buyer here, bumili muna siya ng portion ng property. So, alimbawa, Um, 900 square meters tapos tatlo ang co-owners tapos binili ni uh, buyer yung share ni A. So, binili ni buyer yung share ni A tapos with a right to repurchase. Later on, buyer acquires the share of B, buyer acquires the share of C. So, here, the buyer acquires the whole of an undivided immovable. And uh, here, a portion The portion pertaining to A is subject to a right of repurchase. So ngayon, kung ire-redeem na to ni A, the vendor, the buyer pala, has a right to demand that the vendor a retro or si A na mayroong right of repurchase redeems the whole property. So ulitin ko, A, B, and C are co-owners. A sells his property to B with a, his portion to B. Undivided that. Portion to be with a right to repurchase. Later on, uh, buyers uh, buyer successfully acquires the portion of uh, B. Buyer also successfully acquires the portion of uh, C. Pero itong dalawang to, walang right to repurchase. Later on, A wants to exercise his right to repurchase. 
buyer can compel A to redeem the entire property as per 1611. 1612 and 1613 talks about the rules when property owned in common is sold by the co-owners jointly and in the same contract. So, ito ang mga rules. In number one, the first rule is that the co-owners of an undivided immovable sold by them jointly or collectively and in the same contract with a right to repurchase can exercise only such right as regards their respective shares. So, ang mareredeem lang nila is yung kanilang portion. So, there are co-owners of a property. The property is immobile. The property is undivided. Now, they uh, sell it with a right to repurchase jointly, pero uh, it is in the same contract. Now, uh, remember, ang pwede lang i-redeem is yung portion pertaining to each uh, co-owner. So, let us say A, B, and C are co-owners of a property uh, with an area of 900 square meters. So, all of them jointly and uh, jointly or collectively and in one contract uh, sells yung uh, kanilang yung parcel of land to let us say a buyer now uh, this sale is with a right to repurchase so ni reserve nila yung kanilang right to repurchase as against the seller now if a or b or c would like to repurchase the land Take note, class, that uh, A can repurchase only his portion of 300 square meters. So, can B uh, repurchase a portion of 300 square meters and also C repurchase only a portion of 300 square meters. Or uh, nobody can exercise yung um, right to redeem of for more than uh, his respective share. So, ang right of redemption is confined only to the share of each co-owner. Now, in number two, uh, co-heirs of the vendor of an undivided immovable can exercise the right of redemption only for the respective portions they have inherited. So, obviously, here, the vendor dies. So, let us say vendor uh, sells to buyer a parcel of land. Uh, the sale is with a right to repurchase. The vendor dies and nag-iwan siya ng air. So, air 1 and air 2 or A and B na lang para hindi na ako malito. So, anyway, A and B are co heirs Tapos, they inherit an, an, an undivided immovable uh, property. Yeah. Actually, hindi yung property ang na-inherit nila. But the right to repurchase of their uh, predecessor in interest. Now, uh, take note class that they can... Um, uh, repurchase only yung uh, respective portions that they have inherited. So, yun ang uh, tandaan natin dito. So, each one of the heirs can exercise only the right of redemption for um, what he has inherited, for the portion he has inherited. So, presumably inherited kung in-exercise nila yung kanilang right of redemption. Because uh, remember here, obviously the buyer will become owner of the property. What else? Um, letter C, the Vendi Aretro can refuse partial redemption. This is in accordance with uh, 1613. Uh, he may require all the vendors or all the heirs to redeem the entire property or to agree to its redemption by any one of them. So, this right is given to the buyer in line with the object to put an end to co-ownerships whenever it is possible. So, in our example, dun sa unang example natin, um, uh, A, B, and C tapos jointly uh, or collectively in one instrument uh, sells the land with the right to repurchase so they can repurchase only their particular uh, portions but again in number 3 the Vendi Aretro can refuse partial redemption and require all the vendors to redeem the entire property. Oh, bilhin nyo na yung... Siyempre naman, magkakaroon ng forced co-ownership dyan. So, buyer, tapos bigla, meron siyang co-owner na iba. Yung mga nakapag-redeem na. Eh, siyempre, ayaw na naman ng loyan. So, um, buyer, remember, can uh, force all the uh, property co-owners to redeem and also uh, take note... Um, Pwedeng isa na lang. Oh, si A, redeem mo na yung buo. Yan. So, redemption of any one of them. Same is true in case of uh, heirs. So, yun ang uh, 1613. 
what else? Um, sixteen fourteen talks about a uh, rule when co-owners sell their shares separately. So in sixteen fourteen, the sale of the co-owners of their shares are in separate instruments and uh, probably also in separate dates. But the buyer is uh, the same. So kahit na sinabi ng batas natin na hindi maganda ang co-ownership, pero kung ang sale is made separately and independently, and um, it is, uh, yung property is sold um, uh, on the, on, on, yun nga, in separate instruments and probably at different dates, unfair naman daw na i-require yung co-owners to uh, come to an agreement with regard to the repurchase of the entire uh, thing sold. And obviously, mas lalo naman daw unfair kung um, hindi sila pagre-repurchase if, if in case they fail to agree. So sa 1612, uh, remember class na yung uh, sale doon is in the same instrument jointly. Pero ito, the sale here is uh, in separate instrument. Kaya sa 1614, the buyer cannot require yung um, co-owners to come to an agreement to repurchase the thing uh, sold. So, siguro example, A, B, and C sold uh, their respective shares in an undivided parcel of land with a right to repurchase in separate instrument, different dates. Itong si A, binenta niya ngayong araw na to with the right to repurchase. Si B, binenta niya kinabukasan with the right to repurchase. Si C, binenta niya nung isang linggo pa with the right to repurchase. So, each one of them, obviously, can exercise yung kanilang independent right of repurchase um, with respect to the portions pertaining to them. Kasi nga, undivided ito. And uh, remember here that the buyer cannot compel any of the uh, co-owners to redeem the entire property because the instruments are uh, separate. So, yun ang 1614. 1615 talks about uh, rule, the rule if a buyer retrodice, leaving several heirs. Namatay naman dito yung buyer. Kanina sa 16, um, 1612, namatay ang seller, leaving uh, co-heirs. Here, the buyer dies and uh, leaves several heirs. So, the vendor, a retro, can exercise the right to redeem against the heirs of the vendi. So, with respect only to their respective shares. So, tandaan nyo, napagka binenta ni seller, ito kay buyer, the buyer will become the owner. If the buyer dies, yung mga kanyang heirs will inherit the property. Uh, with, uh, in equal shares yan actually, usually. But uh, always subject to the right of repurchase by the seller. Now, um, whether the thing has been is undivided or has been partitioned among the um, the heirs, remember class na yung seller can exercise the right to redeem only with respect to the share that was received by the particular heir. So, yun ang uh, tandaan natin. So, anyway, si... Um, Ano bang example? Nag-iisip ako ng example. Eh. So, let us say, uh, seller sells, sells a parcel sells a, seller sells a parcel of land to a buyer with pacto de retro right reserved. Tapos, itong si buyer dies uh, leaving uh, heirs, A, B, and uh, C. So, tatlo yung kanyang uh, heirs. So, itong si A, uh, buys, uh, ano ba yun? Brought an action for... Um, Itong si seller, uh, files an action for redemption against A. So, syempre, si A, tandaan nyo na yung property na yun, A receives only one-third portion of the property. So, ulitin ko ah. Buyer sells to sell. Uh, seller sells to buyer. Tapos, buyer dies. Buyer leaves three heirs, A, B, and C. Tapos, itong si seller wants to redeem from A. Obviously, Nung namatay si um, buyer, yung tatlo niyang heirs, let us say um, 900 square meters ng land yung binenta ni buyer, ni binenta ni seller kay buyer. Tapos, um, syempre, nung namatay si buyer, ang mamamana lamang ni A is 300 portion. Mamamana ni B ni 300 portion. Mamamana ni C is 300 portion also. Now, if A wants, uh, if seller wants to 
um, uh, repurchase from A, A is not uh, not allowed to uh, sell resell yung entire property. What A is allowed only is to resell his uh, portion. So A can resell his undivided 300 square meter portion. So yun ang um, rule natin. But uh, obviously, kung sa hatian, yung buong property na binenta ni seller kay buyer is napunta kay A. Tapos yung mga ibang heirs, ibang property ang napunta sa kanila. Ganun ang hatian. So obviously, um, yung si seller can compel A to um, yung um, return yung uh, buong parcel of land based on a right to repurchase. So, yun. Uh, redemption against uh, A for the whole land. So, 1616, um, what the seller must give to buyer if redemption is made. So, pay the price. So, remember the price here is um, the price paid by the seller to the buyer, not the value of the thing at the time of repurchase. Probably, there can be a contrary stipulation. Uh, pero siyempre, um, ang absent any stipulation, what will be returned is the price paid. So, price tendered must be full, otherwise the offer is not effective unless it is accepted. What else? The seller has to return expenses of contract, any other legitimate payments made by reason of the sale. So, usually class yung um, if the expenses here are paid by the buyer, obviously the seller must reimburse yung buyer a retro for the expenses paid by the buyer. So, also applies to necessary and useful expenses made by the buyer. Anyway, necessary and useful expenses all defined in your uh, book. Um, the vendor a retro, remember, is given no option to require the vendee a retro to remove useful improvements of the land. Uh, usual improvements on the land. So, hindi katulad sa mga um, builder in good faith under 546-547. Pwede nilang tanggalin yung kanilang improvement. So, here sa um, uh, 1616, kailangan talagang bayaran ng seller yung improvement ng uh, buyer. So, pay useful improvements introduced by the vendee and also otherwise yung vendee may retain possession of the land until reimbursement of all expenses have been uh, made. What else? Um... Offer to redeem and tender of payment is generally required. So, kailangan hindi lang intention to exercise the right to repurchase, but uh, the law also requires the seller to offer uh, ano yung, uh, yung bona fide tender of uh, payment accompanied by actual and simultaneous uh, consignation of the full amount agreed upon for repurchase. Uh, rules with respect to fruits found in 1617. Um, article will apply only when the parties has not provided for a sharing agreement. So, kung walang sharing agreement, dun lamang mag apply yung 1617. Uh, so, refers only to natural and industrial fruits. Civil fruits accrue daily and belong to the vendee in that proportion. What else? Um, these are the rules. If there are fruits at the time of sale, and the vendee has paid for the fruits. So, anong time ng uh, bayaran na, time of sale, uh, binayaran ng vendee yung uh, fruits. Remember, class, that the vendee must be reimbursed at the time of redemption as uh, yung payment is uh, part of, payment of the fruits are part, is part of the purchase price. What else? Um, letter D, if no indemnity was paid by the buyer for the fruits and syempre kung mayroong fruits at the time of uh, redemption wala rin ibibigay ang seller para doon kasi um nung time na kinuha ng ng buyer yung property may fruits hindi niya binayaran so nung inirere ni na ano na uh, nirere ano ba yun nirere purchase na ng seller tapos may fruits 
hindi rin babayaran ng seller yung fruits. Wala naman kasing binayad yung buyer doon. So, there is nothing to reimburse. What else? Number five, if the property had no fruits at the time of sale and some exist at the time of redemption. So, nung time ng sale, wala. Pero nung kukunin na ng seller mula sa buyer, eh, biglang meron na siyang uh, fruits. Remember that they shall be apportioned proportionately between uh, buyer and uh, seller, giving the buyer a share in proportion to the time he possessed the property during the last year counted from the anniversary date of the sale to compensate the vendee for his expense. So, um, same rule will apply if there are fruits at the time of sale and the vendee paid for uh, the fruits. So, the reason for prorating uh, in the second paragraph is yung uh, issue ng ownership during the period concerned. So, anyway, there are examples in your book. Pakibasa na lang yan kasi ang haba na ng lecture na to. So, uh, 18, 8, 1618 talks about um, yung uh, right of the vendor a retro to recover the thing sold free from charges. Since the buyer becomes the owner of the property, pwede niyang gawin kahit ano dun sa property, even to sell it to other um persons but always with uh, subject to the right of redemption of the seller so syempre pagka ni revoke na yung uh, own, uh, yung ownership ng buyer by the seller by redemption syempre all acts done by the buyer are also revocable now kung halimbawa ang buyer nang hiram siya ng pera tapos sinangla niya yung lupang yan tapos gusto nang uh, i-recover ng seller Siyempre, itong buyer, kailangan niyang tubusin from yung pinagsanglaan niya, yung property. And then, uh, siyempre, after niyang matubos, uh, may exercise na ni seller yung kanyang right of redemption. So, obviously, uh, the vendor has the right to receive the property in the same condition in which it was at the time of sale and free from any encumbrance or charges like yun nga, uh, mortgage. So, kailangan ialis sa pagkakasangla ng buyer yan. Uh, bago niya maibalik ito sa seller. What else? Um, take note also of sec section 2 which talks about uh, legal redemption. So, it is uh, pagka legal redemption or uh, retractor legal. This is defined in 1619. But uh, take note that this is uh, created by operation of uh, law. So, it can be exercised against a transferee who gets the property because of purchase, lesion, and pago, or any other transaction whereby ownership is transmitted by onerous title. So, yun ang uh, legal redemption or retracto legal. So, uh, by operation of law. So, this applies to both movable and immovable property. property Pumipiyok pa ako, no? Property as well. So, what else? Um, it cannot take place in barter. Also, by in case of transmission of property by hereditary right. So, anyway, yung uh, legal redemption, uh, remember the basis is... Um, ay, wala pala, hindi ko pala siguro dyan. The basis is um, as bare statutory privilege to be exercised by the persons who are named in the statute. So, to afford or to give yung a person na enumerated under the law, yung um, way out. So, binibigyan natin sila ng way out. Uh, out of what might be a disagreeable or inconvenient association into which he has been forced to. So, yun ang... Yun ang uh, basis ng legal redemption. So, anyway, instances of legal redemption, marami ito. Sobrang dami na, I'm not sure, uh, yes, it is not even uh, defined in your book. So, anyway, examples, uh, 1088, in case of a uh, sale of hereditary rights, rights sa, not to specific property, for the payment of the debts of the decedent's estate. So, yung hereditary rights, ha? not yung property. What else? Uh, 1620, co-owner's right of redemption, a portion of co-owned property sold to third person, which we will discuss later on. Um, 
1621 right of redemption of adjoining owners of rural, rural land not exceeding one uh, um, one hectare uh, alienated to third persons uh, what else um, the right of redemption of adjoining owners of small piece of um, urban land sold to third persons in 1634 also right of redemption of a debtor in case of sale of credit or other incorporeal right in litigation it is discussed natin ito sa chapter 8 so sa 1634 um yung um creditor sells yung credit or other incorporeal right which is under litigation to a third person so yung uh, debtor may redeem yung yung credit niya uh, yung credit by paying yung uh, assignee noong uh, incorporeal right or yung credit under litigation. In uh, section 261 of the local government code, yung redemption by owner of real property sold for delinquent taxes. The period of redemption here is one year from the date of sale. So, ayan, delinquency sale. Uh, what else? Um, section 119 of the public land uh, law. So, repurchased by a homesteader of homestead sold under the Public Land Act. Period is five years. Section 28, Rule 39 of the uh, 1997 Rules of Civil Procedure as amended. Redemption by judgment debtor of real property sold on execution. So, execution sale. Binenta ng sheriff ang property ng judgment debtor. Period is one year from date of registration of certificate of sale to redeem the property on the part of the judgment debtor. Section 3, Rule 68, Rule of Civil Procedure, Redemption of um, the Mortgagor. Yan. So, ang, ang sa letter I, yung mortgagor naman ang magre-redeem after the mortgage property has been judicially foreclosed and uh, sold. So, the period is, um, again, one year from the date of registration of uh, sale. So, Section uh, 6, Act 3135. Um, in all cases of extrajudicial foreclosure of a mortgage, so, yung una, yung ito, ito. This is uh, judicial foreclosure. Here naman, this is extrajudicial foreclosure. So, again, one year from date of registration of the sale. Uh, what else? Uh, num letter K. In case of uh, Section 12 of the Code of Agrarian Reform, agricultural lessee of land holding sold by the landowner. So yung tenant ito, yun yung tinutukoy ng agricultural lessee. So the landowner sells the land na may tenant. So the tenant can redeem the property. Period is 180 days from notice in writing which shall be served by the vendee on all uh, tenants affected. And... Um, the dar upon registration of the sale so this right has priority over any other right of redemption like the re right of redemption of co owner under 1620 so kung may tenant ang lupa mo ang may ang tenant mo uh, ang former tenant mo kasi binenta mo na ngay lupa no has the right of redemption and his right has priority over all other rights of redemption so yun ang letter k 1620, 1620, the requisites of the right of legal uh, redemption. There must be co-ownership of a thing. There must be a sale of all or any of the shares of other co-owners. So, what else? The sale must be to a third person or non-co-owner. And sale must be before partition. The right must be exercised within 30 days from notice in writing given by the vendor and also Vendi must be reimbursed for the price of the sale. So, tatlo silang owner sa thing. So, itong um, one of the co-owners sells to a third person. So, remember, A, B, and C are co-owners. A sells to a third person. So, yung kanyang share. The thing here is undivided because uh, sale is before partition. Yun ang requirement. Eh. So, anyway, um, a sells his portion. B and C has 30 days from notice in writing given by the vendor or A to redeem the property from the buyer. But again, the buyer must be paid or reimbursed for the purchase price of the sale. So, mas maganda kasi na mabili, ma back ng co-owner yan. Imbis na tatlo pa silang co-owner, um, syempre, 
uh, mababawasan na yung co-owners, dalawa na lang, if um, yun nga, one of them exercises yung right to uh, legal redemption. So, uh, rules of application, para mas malinaw, co-owners' right to redeem is invoked only after the shares of other co-owners are sold to a third person or a stranger. So, if the purchaser is a particular, is also a co-owner, no legal redemption. Kasi nga, na-combine naman yung ownership. So, A, B, and C, A sells to B. Siyempre, yung uh, portion ni A and B, si B na ang may-ari. Tapos, C, remember, cannot exercise the right of legal redemption being, uh, the sale being to a co-owner as well. But else, um... Should any of the heirs sell his hereditary right to a stranger before partition, any or all the co-heirs may be subrogated to the rights of the purchaser by reimbursing him for the purchase price. So, ang binenta rito is um, yung hereditary right. So, yung right niya na magmana. So, this happens before partition and uh, any of the co-heirs may be subrogated to the rights of the purchaser. Papano? Reimburse nila yung <clears throat> nakabili ng hereditary rights for the purchase price uh, paid. Remember that this should be done one month from uh, to be counted from the time they were notified in writing of the sale by the vendor. So, ito yung uh, sinasabi ko sa 1088 kanina. So, once the portion corresponding to each heir is fixed, yung co-heirs turn into co-owners and uh, yung legal right of redemption governs uh, governed by 1620 and 1623 already what else as uh, c right is granted not only to the original co-owners but also applies to all of those uh, who subsequently acquire the respective shares while the community exists so a sells a b and c are co-owners to a b and c are co-owners a sells to um one tapos Siyempre, itong C, B, and C, C, they have a right to repurchase the property sold to one. Pero siyempre, hindi nila binili. Later on, itong C, B sells his property share to two. Itong C, remember, one can exercise the right to repurchase. C can also exercise the right to repurchase. So, it is a right granted not only to the original co-owners but also to subsequent uh, owners. Uh, while the community subsists. What else? Number four, the co-owner who desires to redeem must tender the entire amount of the redemption price or consign the same in court to show good faith. What else? Um, the law will require the redemptioner to pay a reasonable price if the price of the sale is excessively, uh, grossly excessive. So, syempre, kahit na reasonable price ang babayaran niya, tapos ang Benta is grossly excessive price. Uh, Siyempre, kailangan pa rin niyang magkaroon ng proper tender of price. And uh, remember, that can be honestly deemed reasonable under the circumstances. So, without prejudice to the final determination of the courts, um, Siyempre, uh, courts pa rin ang magsasabi kung magkano ang dapat na reasonable price. Yan. Um, the right to redeem is not available if... Uh, a for, former uh, not available to a former co-owner in the last example I gave to you A sells to 1 B and C does not exercise their right of uh, do not exercise their right of redemption uh, B sells to 2 so remember class that A cannot exercise your own right to redeem because he is no longer a co-owner what else number 2 B number Number B. Letter B, co-owners have no right of legal redemption against each other to whom uh, the law grants the same privilege but against uh, third persons only. So, two buyers of the shares and uh, both are co-owners. Uh, one cannot exercise the right against the other. So, hindi pwedeng against co-owners yung right na ito. What else? If the sale is made after partition, the right of legal redemption by a co-owner cannot be invoked. Wala na kasing co-ownership na parte-parte na kasi yung property. The provision covers a case where some or one of the co-owners sells their his or shares in the property co-owned in, owned in common but not 
in the case where all co-owners have sold all of their shares. So, obviously, if all the co-owners sold uh, share, their shares, yung buyer, isa lang siya. So, wala nang co-ownership. So, wala nang uh, right of free redemption. So, what else? Um, purpose of the grant of right to co-owners um, to reduce the number of participants. And until hanggang sa mawalan na ng um, community. So, hanggang mawala na yung co-ownership. Kasi nga naman, yung co-ownership is, again, a, dev, a hindrance to the development and better administration of the property. Siyempre, um, pagka marami kayong may-ari, ang point mo dyan is, may iba namang may-ari, but hindi na lang sila mag-develop, magtuturoan hanggang sa wala nang mag-develop. Yan. So, mas maganda na sa'yo na talaga yung property. So, if you develop it, ikaw lang ang makikinabang. Siyempre, kung meron kang ibang co-owner, uh, iniisip mo, ikaw lang ang nag-invest tapos nakikinabang lahat. So, it's detrimental to the development of the property. 16, uh, 21, requisites of uh, right of legal redemption of adjacent owners of rural land. So, exceeding one hectare. So, yung iba hectare, hectare, hectare. Sige, hectare na lang. Um, number one, requisite both the land of the one exercising the right of redemption and the land sought to be redeemed must be rural. So they are both rural owners. Rural rural land owners. Ang hirap nang sabihin ang salitang rural. So anyway, number two, the lands must be adj adjacent, magkatabi, kadikit. But else, there must be alienation, benta. Piece of rural land alienated must not exceed one hectare. But as um, grantee or vendi must already own any other rural, rural land. So yung nakabili, kailangan meron siyang ibang lupa. But as rural land sold must not be separated by brooks, drains, ravines, roads, and other apparent servitudes from adjoining lands. Kasi syempre, pagka yung rural land is separated by brooks, drains, ravines, etc., hindi na siya adjacent. So, yun ang uh, requisite. So, anyway, uh, take note of the definition of rural land. It is in your uh, book. What else? Um, the rules of application. Number one, the land should exceed uh, one hectare. Adjacent owners, if the land uh, exceeds one hectare, adjacent owners are not given the right of legal redemption. So, kailangan less than or at least um, one uh, isang hektarya, one hectare. So, kasi nga pagka naman sobra-sobrang laki, baka mamaya maging hasyendero na rin lahat ng mga uh, adjacent owners. What else? The right may be exercised only against a stranger. For uh, the right, however, to be exercised against a stranger, the stranger must already have a rural land but not adjacent, hindi katabi. The right cannot be exercised against a vendi if he is also an adjacent owner. Yan. So, what else? In case two or more adjacent owners decide to exercise the right of redemption, the law gives preference to the owner of the adjoining land with the smaller area. If the same area, the one who first requested for redemption. So, ito si, ito si A. Ang hirap na mag, mag ano. Ito si, ito si A. May, may loop. May, ang hirap na mag-demonstrate dito eh. Kasi may pa-adjacent pa eh. Ang dali lang. Ito na lang. Nag-drawing na lang ako. Gagamit na lang ako ng uh, pentel pen. Ito na lang. Ayan. Ayan. Ito yung lupa ni A. Kita di ba? Ayan, yan yung lupa ni A. Tapos, um, mga adjacent owners. Ayan. B. Ayan. Ganda ng drawing ko. Wait lang, pinaperfect ko pa. <laughs> Natawa ko sa ginagawa ko. So, um, si A, balik baliktad siya. Ano ba yan? Sandali lang. Susubukan ko i-reverse. Di kaya. So anyway, ayun na lang. So, uh, A, B, ang kanyang adjacent, uh, ang mga owners ng adjacent property is B, C, and uh, D. So anyway, A sells this land to uh, G. Ayan, si G. 
So si G, meron siyang uh, pag-aaring lupa, pero dito siya located. Yan. 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 Si G. Yan. Yan yung lupa ni G. So, um, anyway, itong si A, yun nga, in our problem, sells the land, sells his parcel of land to um, G. Now, the land of um, A ay, uh, does not exceed 1 hectare. So, hindi siya uh, lumalagpas ng isang hektarya. Now, uh, remember here, class, that um, yung mga adjacent owners can exercise yung uh, right of legal redemption. So, kung halimbawa si A, binenta nga kay G as in my problem, Itong si uh, B, B, C, and D may exercise yung right of legal redemption. Silang tatlo. Um, any one of uh, them. So, yung uh, law, if uh, all of them wants, want to uh, exercise the right of legal redemption, the law gives preference to the owner of the adjoining smaller area dahil tatlo sila smallest so let us say here in our example ang pinakamaliit dito ay si probably si B siguro ang pinakamaliit so B will be preferred to um, redeem the land para lumaki nga naman yung uh, ng konti yung estate ni B now uh, take note that if in our problem ang nakabili ng estate ni A ay either B, C or D Siyempre, yung mga hindi nakabili will have no right of redemption. What else? Um, itong si um, G, yung Vendi, uh, dapat uh, hindi siya, uh, dapat siya ay landowner din. So, meron din siyang lupa. Kaya nga, binigyan ko siya ng lupa banda rito eh. Now, if uh, G buys this land from A and G is a first-time owner of rural land, Remember, the right of legal redemption will not apply. So, yun ang uh, tandaan natin dyan. So, the G, the Vendi, must already own any other rural land. So, if it's the first, there is no right of redemption. The rural land uh, sold must not be separated by brooks. So, kung halimbawa, yan, ito, ito, same problem. So, kung halimbawa, dito may brook dyan, yan, yan, meron kung ano-anong dagat dyan, may separation. So, here, B is not an adjacent owner. Kung gano'n na nangyari. So, yun ang uh, tatandaan natin dito. Ano pa ba? Alien At saka alienation na, kung halimbawa, A donated to G, redemption will not apply. What else? Adjacent. Yan. Ano pa ba? Yan. So, anyway, I think that's it. So, the reason and purpose of the law here is to foster development of agricultural areas by adjacent owners who may desire to in increase for the improvement of their own uh, land. 1622 talks about uh, requisites um, for the exercise of the right of preemption and also right of redemption. So, uh, please take note of the definition of urban land and uh, also preemption and also Redemption, they are all in your book. So, anyway, in a nutshell, preemption arises before a sale. Benta mo muna sa kanila before you sell to another. Redemption after the sale. Na ibenta na, tapos pwede ibay back yung uh, land. So, yun ang pinagkaiba nila. So, anyway, the requisites. Number one, the piece of land is urban land. Number two, the one exercising the right must be an adjacent owner. What else? Um piece of land sold must be so small and so situated that the major portion thereof cannot be used for any practical purpose within a reasonable time. And uh, such urban land was bought merely for speculation. And it is about to be resold so that you can exercise your right of preemption or that its resale has, be, has been perfected. So if you are an adjacent owner, you can exercise your right of redemption. So, the rules of application, the price to be paid is reasonable price. In case of two or more adjoining owners who desire to exercise the right of legal redemption, the law prefers him who, whose intended use of the land appears best justified. Sino bang purpose ang pinakamagandang purpose? 
So, yun ang dun ibebenta. Yung, uh, siya yung pwedeng mag-exercise ng right of legal redemption. So, if two or more adjoining owners gusto nilang exercise yung right na yan, sino bang pinaka-okay ang purpose? So, determinative factor is intended use uh, appears best justified. So, what else? Um, reason and purpose of uh, the law here is to discourage speculation in real estate and the consequent aggravation of housing problems in centers of population. So, so tandaan natin sa 1622. Uh, Yan. Um, if the land here which is very small and has been bought for speculation at siya ay ibebenta, any of the adjoining owners has a right of preemption at a reasonable price. So, pwede nilang bilhin muna. Offer it to us first before you sell it to other people who are not adjoining owners. So, may right yung mga adjoining owners. Sabi nyo muna ibenta. Now, if there is already a resale, Remember, the owner of the adjoining land shall have a reasonable right of uh, redemption, uh, a right of redemption for a reasonable uh, price. So, yun ang uh, tandaan natin dyan. So, anyway, rules of application. Um, 1623, period for the exercise of the right. 30 days from notice in writing by the prospective uh, vendor. Uh, or by the vendor as the case may be. So, prospective vendor, ito yung um, in case of preemption. So, 30 days uh, within, uh, so, bago ibenta ng vendor, yung kanyang urban land, um, notify first the ad adjoining owners. Tapos, they have 30 days to exercise the right of um, preemption. Now, um, by the vendor in case of um in case of redemption na to. So, nabenta na. And uh, remember, kailangan inotify yung mga adjoining owner. So, yung uh, vendor, uh, adjoining owners have 30 days to redeem yung uh, land. So, what else? Um, the periods given in the law are conditions precedent, not periods of prescription. So, offer to exercise the right of the redemption must be within the period stipulated and Remember, class, um, periods are requisites to make the right effective. So, the rules of application for this one, co-owners are preferred over adjacent owners. So, kung halimbawa, adjacent owner wants to redeem, bakos yung small urban land na yun, marami pang co-owner yan, um, co-owners are preferred over adjacent owners. What else? The right of redemption is exercise. The offer to redeem must be in legal tender and period provided in the above article is absolute, non-extendable. So, reason for the law is to discourage keeping for a long time property in a state of uncertainty beyond the 30-day period. So, prejudicial to the public uh, interest. So, anyway, that's it for Chapter 7. Um, please stand by for Chapter 8. Um, we will talk about assignment of credits and other incorporeal rights. Uh, thank you class and have a good day.